Hey, what's up, Victor? Uh, yeah, sorry to take so long with this thing, man, but uh, here it is. Okay, so, yeah, trying to get into uh, Israel or the Palestinian territories is uh, really just like such a, a crapshoot, you know? I mean, like, it really depends which border crossing you go through and uh, what guard you get. Like, it's like, just like, it could be night and day, you know? Um, I went through um, three times, I guess. Uh, the first time I came in, I'd heard all the horror stories from my friend who had uh, flown from the United States into Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv, and uh, like uh, got put in a prison cell for two days while they like questioned him and, and who the hell knows what. And they let him in in the end, but like I like he told me of other people that got sent on a plane back to the United States and all that. So because um, I know they uh, they kick you out to the country that you came from if they don't accept you into the country. And uh, since my name is Mohammed, I uh, I thought that uh, it might be a uh, uh, a likelihood of, of happening. So uh, I flew to Jordan and I stayed there for uh, half a day just checking out on men and then I uh, and then I went across the um, uh, what is it called again? I think it's Sheikh Hussein. It's the it's the uh, oh the, the Allenby is what it's called on the Israeli side. The Allenby crossing. And uh, I came in there and uh, yeah it was uh, it was weird. It was like uh, like a little friendly at first, like light questioning, and then uh, I, I was questioned by like three different guys, and like they were all like really different. Like like the first one was like friendly and like, but like like asking weird questions, like what do you think of Nasrallah? What do you think of uh, Hezbollah? What do you think of this? Oh, okay, okay, you know all this kind of stuff. And uh, my story had been, uh, I was told that if you tell them you're going to go do anything in the West Bank, uh, that you're never gonna get let in, right? So. Uh, my story was, uh, look, I'm just going to go visit some friends. Uh, I w actually was going to do this in, in Tel Aviv and Haifa. Gave them uh, their phone numbers and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, no, the whole time they were like, we don't believe you. You're a liar. Like, uh, uh, who knows? Like, uh, who do you know here? You know somebody in the West Bank. You're lying to us. Tell us. Uh, and then they left after I gave them the numbers and they came back and they're like, we just found out that, you, like, that you've been lying to us. Tell us the truth right now and maybe we'll go easy on you. I was like, oh, fuck. And uh, I mean, I had made my Facebook uh, account all private and everything, but then I thought to myself, these people who, uh, their phone numbers I gave them, I didn't tell them not to say what I was doing there, which was teaching English uh, in, in the refugee camps. Uh, so I, was, I kind of freaked out and it was probably a little stupid, but I was like, okay, you know what, look, I am going to go do all this uh, tourist stuff like I told you about, but I'm also going to be volunteering uh, part-time in, uh, in Nebulus in the West Bank, teaching English. And uh, the guy was actually, that guy was actually kind of cool. He kind of sighed and was like, look, that's not a fucking crime. Uh, you don't need to hide that from us. Uh, uh, is, is, there, is that the complete truth? Is there anything else you're hiding? Um, and after that, like, he's like, okay, look, uh, you're lucky. Uh, I'm going to let you pass, but I don't even know what the what the... You get interrogated. He was the shin bed. He was like the intelligence service. He wasn't the border police. Uh, so I, so he went through all my stuff. Uh, didn't find anything. And then he turned me over to the border police, who asked me the same exact questions, like, "Oh, who do you know here? Are you seeing somebody in the West Bank?" Blah 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 blah. But like a lot more rude. I mean, just like I would like I hadn't slept in like you know like twenty four hours. I've been on planes for the whole time. So I pat. So like they come and ask me a question, the border police man, and he would leave. For like 20 minutes and I'd like pass out like just because I was exhausted and I would wake up to him like poking me with, with a stick be like wake the fuck up wake the fuck up and like asking me some other like you know other random ass question and in the end he let me through too but uh they let me in uh they they made a mistake on my visa who knows whether it was on purpose or not uh marking me as having come in uh a month before I had actually, I actually showed up in the country, so I only had two weeks on my two months on my visa instead of the, the the regular three months. But at least I got in, which I was super happy about. Um, and uh, and yeah, then um, then uh, then yeah, the second time after my two months were up, uh, the second time I went through the Eilat crossing between Jordan and uh, and the West Bank, and I this time was traveling with a, a Jewish friend of mine with friends in, with family in Israel. Uh, and the experience was just like night and day. One, when you leave, they didn't really do anything to you. They, they never really questioned me when I left. They just like, oh, we need to like, you know, look over your file. And they make you sit somewhere for an hour and then they let you through. And no words exchanged, nothing, no questioning. No accusations of being a terrorist or anything. Uh, so, yeah, we left. We went to Jordan. We saw Petra. We saw Wedi Rum, all that kind of stuff. And we came back together. And... Uh, He's like, he's a crazy bastard. He's like always carrying a, 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 a 
some kind of musical instrument with him, and he's playing with it, and he's he's walking in front of me, and uh, they're like, oh, okay, where are you from? Oh, yeah, my brother lives in this city. Oh, okay, whatever. And they're like having a good time with him, and he goes through. And he doesn't even think to wait for me. He doesn't even, he doesn't even think that, like, like, I would have a different experience. He just keeps walking. And they say, oh, oh, Muhammad, okay, wait, we're going to have to, like, you know, interrogate you and all this kind of stuff. And, like, the, uh, and my friend was still walking. Like, he didn't even realize what was going on. I'm like, hey, Phil, man, turn around. And uh, he's like, oh, are you two together? And then um, when, they knew, they, when they knew where we were together, they just kind of took us apart. Uh, not even that far apart. I mean, like, it was just, like, you know, like, 20 feet apart. And just uh, ask us questions like, where do you know this guy from? Uh, how long have you known each other? How do you know each other? Where are you going to go after this? All this kind of stuff. Like, really polite. Really, uh, really like, nice. No accusations. No accusations of, you know, having connections with this butler or going to, like, do anything like that the way it was the first time I came through. Um, and in the end, they just, they just let it let us in. I think they even gave me a jelly donut. Uh, I mean, it was, it was surreal. It was, like, night and day. Like, really night and day. Um, so I got in, uh, the second time I got in, I got involved in things that were a little bit more overtly political. I, uh, was wor working with, uh, Youth Against Settlement, uh, Youth Against Settlement, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, um, uh, took part in a protest that they put on, uh, where they had, uh, 300 Palestinians and 30 Israelis walk down the main street, uh, or try to walk down the main street of Hebron, which is the... Aside from East Jerusalem, the biggest city in the West Bank, but the whole city center is off limits to Palestinians, even to walk on the streets. Uh, this used to be the biggest marketplace in like the entire southern West Bank. Uh, so we, we showed up with 300 people and tried to peacefully, 100% peacefully, not even a stone thrown, uh, try to walk down uh, this, uh, the main street. And uh, they didn't like that too much. And uh, as soon as they got tear gas, sound grenades, whatever, and as soon as they got reinforcements, uh, they had a riot police dash into the crowd and just grab a few people and, and drag them off. Uh, and for whatever reason, I was one of the people they, uh, they targeted. And uh, they took me off, and that is a whole uh, <laughs> uh, interesting story in and of itself. But in the end, I didn't get deported. I just got banned from Hebron. Uh, for the la I only had two weeks on my visa at that point. And uh, my friend Mikhail, who I was uh, was, uh, was living with and, and working with on a, on a, on a documentary project, uh, said, look, we'll get this uh, Israeli art institute that's uh, been funding us to like sponsor you as, as an official, like uh, uh, for an official volunteer visa. It'll be all good and don't worry about it. So I spent the last two weeks of my, of my time there uh, just dealing with Israeli bureaucracy and getting nowhere. Ended up having to go to Jordan because uh, my visa, like on the last day, because it just it didn't work out before the last day. So I uh, I crossed through uh, the crossing between the West Bank and Jordan that time, not knowing that that's not considered an official border crossing by Jordan, and that they won't give you a uh, a uh, uh, an entry visa from there. So I, I I exited through Israel again. Okay, uh, we have to check your file, make me sit around for an hour, and then uh, okay, go through. I get to Jordan, they're like, oh, you don't have a visa, we have to send you back. They sent me back. When I get back, that was probably like the worst experience like possible. I mean, there they were super suspicious, super accusing, super whatever, like, you're lying to us. Why did you go to Jordan and come back? Did you meet someone there? Uh, what were you involved in the West Bank? I'm going to look up your police records. And they start saying things. Uh, I'm pretty sure at this point that they were just making shit up and hoping something would stick. She's like, okay. Tell me about the knife that you were caught with. And uh, I was like, what could she possibly be talking about? I'm like, oh, one time when I was going through the, the, uh, the checkpoint between, um, between uh, the H1 and H2, the, the Palestinian Authority controlled part of Hebron and the Israeli army controlled part of Hebron, I had a ba my backpack with me and I had my peanut butter jar and a butter knife, like a little butter knife. You can even scratch someone with this. And they made me wait for about two hours while they checked me out and they ended up confiscating my butter knife. Uh, and I thought, is, is that really my record? And I told her the story. I was like, look, I just like peanut butter. I mean, like, I'm cheap. I'm poor. Uh, and she didn't, she was like, I don't know. Uh, kept kept saying all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, yeah. In the end, actually, they were, uh, they were like, closing uh, the border crossing. And she was, like, so rushed that she just, like, fuck it. Like, give, give them a one-day stamp and that's it. Uh, like, just before, like, she, like, was like, oh, and you were arrested. Uh, and I didn't know whether they were making it up or not. So I was like, yeah, I was. And I told her, I, I started saying this thing. And then, like, that's when they were, like, closing. Uh, <laughs> and they gave me a one-day stamp. Um, uh, so, yeah, then I then I had to take a $100 taxi to uh, the official border crossing. Uh, again, wait for an hour, two hours while they check your file. No words exchanged, no interrogation. Go through to Jordan. 
Uh, I was actually going to tell you on the Jordanian side too, just because of that other stab and whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, then um, spent uh, a bunch of time in Jordan again, dealing with bureaucracy and trying to get all the papers in order. After about a month, uh, we did actually get the papers in order and uh, signed all this other kind of stuff. A, a, a huge headache. Um, and I show up to the, the nice border crossing again. I go all the way to, to the south of Jordan across the way a lot. Um, and uh, I go through and um, I have a piece of paper, an official piece of paper signed by the director of this like pretty prestigious art institute in, uh, in Hulon in Israel. And... Uh, and yeah, um, I, I go through with uh, with names, numbers, everything, and uh, really polite again. No accusations of being a terrorist or a liar or anything. Uh, much more calm than the other one. Uh, but uh, yeah, they go through my stuff. Uh, uh, like, oh, what's this? There's like a, a Palestinian keychain, which I was stupid and like it was caught in some other weird like pocket of my thing. But I already told him I was in the West Bank. I was totally honest. Uh, well, I left out the political, you know, connotations of what I was doing, but I mean, yeah. Uh, but, so I didn't figure it was a big deal. Um, it took about like three, four hours. Uh, they made me go to a room, like, like, they were like, oh, do you want some water? Do you want whatever? Oh, here's a private room for you, so you don't have to like, you know, like, be here while everybody's going in and out. You can play your guitar, you can rest, here's some food, some, some pretzels. Uh, and after that, they politely came back and said, oh, we're sorry, um, you've actually been banned from the country. Uh, we're gonna take you across the Jordan now. I'm like, can you tell me why I've spent like a month trying to like put this uh, paperwork together like we're sorry we can't even tell you you can call the ministry afterwards here's a red stamp on your passport uh, how long am I banned for oh we can't tell you uh, okay I go across the Jordan thing uh, Jordan's weirded out again because this is the second time I've had like fast like like border problems with them I have 24 hours to get out of Jordan I catch the first flight out to New I take a bus to Amman for six hours I catch the first flight out to New York um, and then when I get there uh, I'm crashing at my friend's place and I'm looking it up and apparently a black stamp means you've been banned from the company for, from the from Israel and the Palestinian territories for 10 years and a, and a red stamp usually means five years uh, from what I've read uh, I didn't bother calling the Ministry of Interior because I could never could they, they only have an Israel uh, a Hebrew line and I couldn't find their website in English uh, and it was just a huge mess, huge mess. Um, but uh, yeah yeah I'm I it looks like I'm banned for probably five years from uh, from uh, Israel and the West Bank which uh, is kind of sucks because I was getting involved in some really really cool projects um, and yeah I'm still working remotely uh, doing a uh, web programming for this uh, documentary project that, uh, that I was working on um, heb2.tv if uh, any of you guys want to check it out and uh, yeah I guess that's it alright Victor um, I hope that was a uh, good enough quality and all that my computer's a piece of shit man like it's falling apart I finally found a friend with like a micro microphone and shit I could record on uh, and yeah man too much rum on low water kind of makes you forgetful but uh, yeah dude hope you're doing good out in Strasbourg man and um, dude one of these days I'll make it out there man alright dude until then take it easy man